It's quite nice to be able to pick things up easily, so you might want to try a paper clip. Simply bend it up, open the base up, this part here, a little bit more, and you've got your grabbing bit and your base, and bring it back down, and as you can see, it stands quite nicely, easy to pick up and move. And different colours, got a blue one there. Going further with the paper clip idea, I came up with the idea of having people stuck to your paper clip. So you can see here what I've done, and not too hard for your kids to do, is just cut out a little person shape and actually blue tack them to the paper clip. A yellow one, and there's a slightly bigger red one there. And they're quite easy to pick up. You can put a face on it, decorate it other ways, and you've got quite an easy to use playing piece. I'll just zoom in for this one, and if you need quite a lot of counters of each colour, you might want to think about making them from Fimo or any other kind of baking clay product with a few different colour options. So here I've got black ones and orange ones and some green ones and you can mix the colours of Fimo of course. These have just been rolled into a sausage and then sliced crosswise and what I also played around with was making a pawn type shape out of Fimo as well. So that came out quite well. So that's uh, another type of material that you can use. Other simple, easy to grab stuff includes things like these beads from the $2 shop, two different colours you'll see there. Um, they're made of glass. If they are thrown very hard, they will break. So you may feel like there's a bit of a safety hazard there. Uh, Similarly, these ones here, lovely chunky glass shaped, star shaped, these ones are. You can see that there. And uh, very nice pieces, but made of glass, so you may prefer um, to pass on those ones. Moving further around, our dinosaurs are pretty cool. We sell these uh, at the network as well. And the nice thing about these sets is there's one different styles of dinosaur. So different species, but then in each species there is also different a set of colours. So they're quite cool. Um, a little bit prone to fall over. Uh, some of the standing up ones like the T-Rex might fall over. So yeah, they're quite fun if your board's uh, big enough to fit them. Coming further around, bottle tops. A classic, a few sharp edges there maybe. To to look out for but quite fun and got two sides face up face down another really useful type of counter can be a washer these are penny washers quite large uh, washers not expensive to buy bags of 10 or 20 from your hardware store they can be colored or have stickers stuck on them to make them more uh, visually appealing and um, yeah, they're quite chunky, they're quite durable. And of course, you can spin them while waiting for your turn. Which is quite fun. Other sorts of poker chips, different colours, they, they can be quite useful. You can also write on those, of course. Um, Another thing with the washers is they're different shapes and sizes, so you can also use these much smaller washers. As you can see, with these ones I tried to paint them, spray paint them with a metallic paint, which I thought might survive, but really didn't take, and tends to flake. So, not so easy to colour those. Uh, stickers, like I showed you before, might be the way to go. The last counter ideas I've got here are the coins. A little bit like the washers, nice and chunky. You could again put a sticker on one side to try and colour them. These are just uh, something that someone gave me, commemorative coins from somewhere. So really anything with a, a weight, a size, a colour can become a counter and, and work pretty well. Oh, 
over in the matchbox here. I forgot to show you these. And you know, matchboxes are really handy for storing things, especially smaller things. And here we got buttons. Okay, so another possibility for counters or chips. Smaller, uh, a little bit fiddlier, but you know, kids' fingers can often handle slightly smaller uh, objects without too much difficulty. Uh, the other point, of course, of counters is to keep track of score or points in a game. And one of the things that you can use for that, which I think is quite handy, is matchsticks. Okay, we, I use these quite a bit when I'm teaching games. If you don't want to have to write down a score on pencil and paper, if you want to make them a little more useful, you might want to consider colour coding your matches so that different colours represent different amounts. And if you want your kids to remember, you can make a simple chart. So, one is yellows, red stands for fives, and green stands for ten. So you've got a nice simple visual reminder of what the matchsticks stand for in terms of points. And that's one of the keys with board games, I think, is make it as visual as possible. Easy to see, easy to pick up what's happening. Use good contrasting colours, but not too many colours. And really play around with different materials, different things that work and let your kids be a bit creative as well. Have a look on our website and you'll see some ideas also for making boards for your games and then you can put these uh, wonderful counters to use. You'll also see there are some instructions for different games that you can play using all these different materials and boards. Thanks for watching and um, talk to you again soon.